Hey everyone, this is Nick LaRue from Film Snobbery and I am here still representing the South Georgia Film Festival. I am not in Valdosta right now at VSU, but let's pretend we are. And who am I here today speaking with? Uh, my name is Carrie Maletto and I am the producer for The Jump. The Jump, nice little short film. Uh, I am excited to speak with you about it actually. So one of the questions I love asking producers is, what kind of producer were you to the film? What did you do? And that's a great question because I think a lot of people don't realize that there are different producers. Um, so the jump for me existed to actually push me into a different type of producing than I was used to previously. So I am a production producer at heart. I love being on set um, because part of my life is also an actor. So I'm in front of camera. And when I'm not in front of camera, I am, you know, I want to be in where the production is. That's the most exciting part for me. But I recognize that with a lot of the amazing filmmakers that I had worked with previously, they were so talented at getting everything like ready to go. And they were great afterwards with the editing and getting everything packaged. But I wasn't experiencing those parts because they were doing it. And so production for me, no problem. Getting the team together, um, you know, doing our uh, principal photography, getting everything in the can is like my specialty. Great. On um, this one, I wanted to be from start to finish. So literally from words on the page all the way through uh, editing and getting it out to the festivals. And um, so I was able to accomplish that with this. So I was technically pre, uh, post, and production producer. I'm also an executive producer. I'm one of two executive producers. Our other was Jason Edwards. And so we worked as a team to come up with the, the financing. Um, so I kind of, I guess I had my hand in a lot of different places on this one. You're all over the place. And <laughs> how did you get connected with the director, Daniel? Oh, so that's a great story. So Daniel, you know, has been in the film business for a very long time, actually. He's been a production coordinator on some really large films and productions here in Atlanta. Uh, and he grew up in the Atlanta area. So certainly, you know, when he wrote this, he was kind of writing it as as kind of just reminiscence of, of growing up and actually really paying homage to Atlanta. Um, and so he had this script and he wanted to make it but he wanted to make it with the right team. And so it kind of was something that's been sitting for a while, but never was it something like, like, like he wanted to make it. He just wanted to hook up with the right people. So my husband, who is a sound mixer, uh, worked with Daniel on a project uh, back in around 2015. And Daniel had a party. <laughs> so we went to the party. As and, one does. You know, and uh, so all the, you know, crew and some cast members are there. And and um, my husband said, I want you to meet Daniel. And we start talking and we really hit it off. Uh, so we really kind of had a similar energy. And he found out that I had produced and, and been part of films down in South Florida, which is originally where I'm from. And we had just moved to Atlanta at that time because it's around 14, 15. Mm hmm and I said, you know, I don't, I don't have a team here in Atlanta. I would love to make something. It's been a minute. I want to, you know, keep going. And so we talked about it and we started uh, with another producer and then we stopped uh, things, just financing didn't come into place. And then we started again. And then two weeks before we were supposed to shoot, our financing dropped. Oh. So we stopped. Absolutely. And so we had a lot of like starts, stops. Yeah. Um, and during that time, I think it really, um, it really built our, our relationship with each other. I mean, because it's, it's heartbreak. It's heartbreak. Every time you think the green light go <laughs> stop, <laughs> you know, and all the while we kept saying to each other that we're, we're not giving up. We're not giving up. We, you know, we might, we might've gone quiet for a while kind of thing. Um, and then it finally happened. And then just to throw in a little tidbit that you haven't gotten to yet, but we, had our shoot ready to go and that's when Atlanta was being hit with a hurricane oh yeah okay it is not normal here at all and we had to make a call two days before the shoot to push and we pushed a month and so after all of this background stuff you know here we are thinking we're at the finish line we're finally doing this and then we had to push again so this was not without um a lot of just you know continued yeah yeah. No, it's fantastic. I, you know, and it's, it, it's a great thing about independent film as well, because you can afford to do that kind of, I mean, it's never great to lose the time or the money or maybe the cast or whatever in any production. But if you, in independent film, you're so much more uh, able to pivot to keep all of those 
uh, balls, you know, plates spinning, balls rolling, however, whatever the metaphor here is, you know, I feel like that, you know, as opposed to like a big budget production where it's just like, yeah, that one day, that hurricane could have cost you, you know, 250,000, a half a million, you know, half a million, something like that. So, you know, it, to be able to go like, okay, we have to cancel this for a week or two or a month or uh, even six months or something like that to be able to pick up where you left off uh, as long as, you know, the, the money is sitting in account an account somewhere and people are still available and willing to do it, you're, you're kind of, you know, back on track. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. As someone who, who is a, a, both an actress and a host as well, do you, uh, do you feel that it's, it's kind of important and crucial for you to, to, to know, uh, how everything behind the scenes works for you to do your job in front of the camera better? Yes. I mean, uh, you know, e even as an actress, I think I've always had interest in behind the camera and, and not all do. And so I always like to make it clear, like, I think as an actor, you should understand what each department is and what what they're trying to accomplish, because it makes you better uh, on set and just the way that you're acting and, and how you're helping the process and not hurting the process. But um, I from the beginning was just enthralled with the entire filmmaking process. I don't know, I, already I've been through so many different positions I don't, and I'm hoping to direct soon as well, but like, and I haven't touched that one yet, but um, you know, I've UPM'd, I first assistant directed, I have um, the second, second AD'd, I've, uh, <laughs> and I finally found my way, it, it, when I got to producing, I thought that's better for me because I, while I can be an incredible first AD and or, or, or UPM, and I did a great job at it, it wasn't where my heart was in sure, it. So um, I think I finally kind of zoned in on where I want to be in the process, and that would be the acting and, and producing side. And I, like I, Nug, you know, I love yeah. uh, production producing, but um, yeah, I, I think did I answer your question? No, you <laughs> totally did. No, and and, and that no, it, it's it's uh, it's something to be said about again uh, the film industry in general, independent film as well, but the film industry in general that really depending on where your heart is and what your personality is, there kind of is a position for almost everybody. You know what I mean? If you're a real, like you're an organizer and you are someone who like, you love order your OCD, maybe a little bit like I am, you know, UPM production coordinator, something like that. Like that stuff is great. Like, Oh, I want to know where the schedule is. A script supervisor is also good for that. Like having all the breakdowns, having all the, you know, what's uh, the continuity and the, all the, the, the take markers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Great stuff. Uh, if you're someone who, you know, yeah, if you're the theater kid, yeah, in front of the camera, obviously, if you're the, you know, if you want to be a, a the, here's the interesting thing, people think you want to be a dictator, you want to be a director, no, <laughs> I, I I've always felt that the, the, the dictator is not the director, I think the dictator is the AD, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people don't yeah. realize that. Um, uh, yeah, but I, I mean that in the nicest way. No, I, and I absolutely yeah. get what you mean. Um, you know, and and certainly the film that I, I got to first AD, uh, which is called Not for Human Consumption, it is out there in in the I think it's on Amazon still. And um, I am very proud of that film, and I'm proud of the twenty. I think it was twenty two days that we shot um, over twenty locations. So in a independent film. And I think that's why I'm also never going to be a first AD again because it's 20 locations in 22 days. I literally was just like, as soon as I was able to put that down, uh, the first AD really kind of does run the set. And, yeah. and it is a matter of, you, you, and every everybody kind of looks at first ADs and is like, oh, what a tyrant. But it's like, you, know, you literally are keeping the ship moving. Yes. And, and it, it's there's so many parts. And to go back to your question previous, it is important, no matter what you are in the filmmaking process, to understand everyone's job yeah. because you never want to tread on someone's job. And I, I think one of the most interesting things about myself, I, I even though this was a $20,000 short and I, I've done shorts that we did for $2,000, I still run them exactly the same as if you were walking onto, you know, a Marvel or Netflix shoot or whatever. I try to use all the same elements for scheduling, for how we're going to do our days. Um, Safety is important, you know, um, it, all the things that are paramount to make sure that you're running a, a safe set, a fun set. Um, I, I I want everyone to walk away feeling like they were part of it. Like I never want anyone to walk away and feel like what a waste of my time. Yeah. Um, and so for all those reasons, yes, you should know everything about as much as you can 
about each department and, and what they're trying to accomplish so that you're not treading on and you're not impeding that department from doing their job. And that, that kind of consistency is fantastic too, even from the perspective of like, if you're working with people who are, maybe it's their first or second movie, or, you know, they're still a little new to the experience, th them going to another set isn't going to be as jarring uh, for the next thing that they're doing, because they're gonna be like, oh, I already did this. And we did this this way, uh, as long assuming that they're running their set that in that manner. Uh, but no, that's, that's fantastic. You know, let's talk a little bit more about Jump. I know that, you know, what the, the kind of the premise of it is is uh but for those that were not able to attend the festival um would you care to kind of uh, chat a little bit about it so sure so uh our our short was meant to kind of bring you back to summer uh it is about five friends who are trying to beat the neighborhood bully and um he is just taking their money and um it's at the bike jump and you know, summer's coming to an end and this is it. This is the chance to do it. And so it's all the means and all the things that they decide to do that's going to help them to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from the beginning, you know, this is this is the point. We're here to try to beat this kid at this thing. And it's all the journey and adventure and everything they get themselves into along the way. And then you end with our lead taking his attempt. And so, um, the feedback that I've gotten has kind of been everyone said, my God, it made me remember being a kid. It made me remember my summers. There are no adults in this film. It is all kids, um, which is what would they say? Two things in filmmaking don't ever do. Don't ever work with kids. <laughs> don't ever kids and animals. <laughs> I did it. One down. Um, and it was wonderful because we went to an incredible acting school here in Atlanta um, to kind of find, and we used an incredible casting director to, because we knew our kids had to be solid for this to, to play um and so and we did we got the most incredible actors and um i'm pretty proud of my cast so it's a fun movie it's a fun yeah, thing. No. And, and you know finding kids who look like kids and i know that's a weird thing to say but like finding kids who who look like kids and can play kids or as like you know uh <gasps> Okay, not everyone is the, the the cast of Stand By Me or like the right. cast of Stranger Things, you know, who could play, you know, you know, their age in a convincing manner, especially if you're looking at a period kind of situation as well, where you're you're trying to tell a story that's a little adjacent or you're trying to create that um that situation of nostalgia or something like that. You want them to look and act and appear like that's how they were back when I was growing up or something like that. And I feel like that kind of casting can be really difficult. It's like, it's, it's, it's more than just the job for hair and makeup at that point. You know, I, I feel like they're, they're like kids in a, and I got, I feel like old man right now, like kids these days, um, <laughs> <laughs> but kids these days, they care. I feel, I, I feel that they carry themselves different than I did when I was a kid and I was a child of the eighties. So I'll, I'll throw that out there. You know, like they carry themselves different. You know, we, we were the like the last generation of kids on bikes to some degree. And, you know, as they say, and, you know, you, you sit there and you try to tell a kid now, like, okay, this was you every summer, morning, noon, and night until, you know, the sun went down or something. And it's like, I, you know, I don't think they have the genetic memory of it, you know, necessarily like burned in there. Did, did you have any difficulty in that casting trying to get, you know, that feeling? It's funny you say that. That's why I was like, I'm like ready to talk. I'm like, yes. Um, yeah, sorry, brevity is not my strong suit. No, that's okay. Me neither. Um, so our cast, it was in the casting process. So many of the kids did not know how to ride a bike. We actually had to put that as part of our casting. Like, do you know how to ride a bike? And when we got down to callbacks, we asked them to send us videos of them riding because so many kids don't ride bikes now and so um as that being one of the main parts of this film there's a lot of bike riding we needed them to have at least a general ability um they did not do the stunts so we do have when they jump you know we had an actual stunt person do that uh just be, you know for safety um but you know, we needed them to be able to authentically ride around town and and we have a lot of video montages and a lot of things of them riding they had so much fun. Can I just tell you, our lead, uh, Braxton, um, he like did not want to leave his bike. Like by the end, he was having so much fun and he kept saying to us, please, please let me just jump once. Like, can I just, you know, and I'm like, oh. And so like when we got to the end and we were done and I said, you're cut. 
And, he, and I said, you're off my roster. I said, if you want to go jump that thing, I said, it's up to your parents. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. You I'm know? not going to say you can't. But like, I know. I, I, it's not. Yeah, the set. Yeah. Um, and so, but he got, you know, really, it, it's kind of fun to see them get excited about something that used to be so normal for, for kids, for, for our age, you know? And, um, so that was good fun, but yes, it was, it was really hard to find good bike riders. I believe it. I, I believe it. I mean, just, I can imagine if you even asked them to do something even more, uh, nostalgic, like roller skating or something like yeah. that, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine them looking at a you know skate key or something like that and going, mm, "What? Like maybe you might understand rollerblades, but like going back to old schools, yeah, no, I, I that's that's crazy. Um, yeah, it's it's such a uh, anytime you're doing something with that level of nostalgia or something like that, I feel like there's something lost. But then at the same time, like it's like I I would assume if you have kids and you start introducing them to like the video games that you played with growing up or like the toys that you grew up with or something like that. You hope that eventually somewhere there's a connection mm -hmm. and that, you know, that connection sparks to something, you know, uh, well, a hopeful obsession that allows you to also then take part in those things and relive you it. it yourself. <laughs> yeah. I, I've said this before, like I spend 90% of my adulthood rebuying and recapturing my childhood. Yeah, you know? Why not? That's what this whole film kind of was for. It, it was for the the reliving experience. Um, we really wanted to capture kind of the Sandlot meets Stranger Things feel. And, and and based on the feedback we're getting at festivals, a lot of people are saying yes, that that is what they're getting from it. So we were successful there. But, you know, that, that's kind of the fun we wanted to create. Was, you know, everyone loves nostalgia and everyone, you know, remembers that bully in their neighborhood. And like when you were hanging out with your besties and you were riding around and your parents had no idea where you were. And you have your yeah, right. in the neighborhood and you, you know you had all these plans and all these things and what's so cool about the jump again no adults so it's like you know lord of the flies a little bit uh because it's like the, this is this their own government like how they run things and how they decide to do things is of their own accord and so um that you yeah, know that's what we're we're playing back to and hearkening back to that's fantastic. I love all of that. Um, <laughs> now, let me ask you, let's shift gears a little bit over to film festivals. So obviously part of the reason why we're here chatting right now, South Georgia Film Festival. Had a great time. Um, I know you folks were in in and out. You had to you had things and weather and there was all things. So I totally get that. But let's talk about that. What to you makes a good film festival? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, having been to, I haven't been to a a large amount. Uh, I think at this point we've been accepted into 15 festivals, but I think I've only been able to attend um do to do to do. Like I think I'm up to like four and I have two two coming up. Um, but I think you know it's the festivals that really try to create a lot of mingling opportunities. Uh, because certainly when you're in watching the films, which is the reason you're there, and and always that's great. And I love to try to go to as many short blocks as I possibly can. Uh, because I love seeing what's happening with short films. It's also an easy way to just knock out a bunch at one time. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, you know, it's really cool. And so I've tried to watch like as many short blocks that I can at all the festivals that I've gone to. But like I think that the times I also look forward to is when other, you know, I could talk to other filmmakers because we can talk about like our challenges, the things we've overcome, you know, um, what we're looking forward to next. Um, I met an, a great filmmaker um that was in Orlando. Wait. I'm trying to think, <laughs> and I'm like, where was I? Uh, yes, I think I was in Orlando and I met an incredible filmmaker here in Atlanta. So here, here's a guy who lives down the street from me, is making films, and we met at the Orlando Film Festival. So that was awesome. Um, yeah. And we're you know, going to talk more about trying to get more filmmakers together. So I think the idea of the film festivals is bringing together people who all have the same desires we all want to make films we we don't have huge budgets we are trying to accomplish hard feats every time we decide to make a film and so having that camaraderie and that support uh is is huge and and different film festivals are different too right so there's the ones that are like the really big ones that you know like the, the you know the studios are going to that one and they're going to have you know but then i kind of have seemingly realized i really love kind of the smaller to mid level because it's just so real and it's giving such opportunity to the people who would probably never be seen otherwise. I mean, there's really 
you right. I mean, it's just, it's, it's hard to get your work out there. I so was having that conversation with my wife uh, the other night where I was like, I, I was looking down and I happened to catch eye with uh, this binder full of uh, DVDs that I have from, I've been doing this for 16 years. So I have just a, one of those big thick CD binders or DVD binders of, of movies. And I'm like, I guarantee you 99% of the movies that are in that binder have only been seen by maybe a handful of people. And I said, and I don't quite know how to feel about that. Like, you know, like part of me goes like, that's both unfortunate, fortunate that they got made, but yeah. unfortunate that like, some of those people are not in the industry with us anymore. Some of them are, you know, have gone on to better. I'm saying, yeah. yeah. Or, yeah. you know, like it's, it's a real, it's an interesting thing. And, but you, you brought up something that I've been saying a lot lately, especially since like the strikes, you know, that, that, you know, the writer strike and all that kind of stuff in SAG um, where, you know, I feel that the, the future of the success of independent film is going to come from collective action and in terms of bringing filmmakers together, bringing, uh, resources together because I feel like the the idea of being able to collective bargain um, for better rates for better you know uh, space for more can, you know if you can tell go to any you know let's say you want to shoot somewhere and you're like yeah but I can also promise you five more shoots this year or 10 more or whatever you may be able to get a better deal on your shoot and you may be able to create a longer relationship with those people i think the same goes for distribution um you know and that that might be a way to subvert a lot of what is happening with the studios basically having this stranglehold on theaters um on theatrical anyway i know that that's a complete divergence from <laughs> this awesome short that. film called the jump <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, it's it's a conversation that I've been having a lot with filmmakers uh, um, all over the the country and for a while now, but really more crystally since the the strikes. What are some of the biggest challenges from your perspective? Like, what is what is the thing that dogged you folks uh, the most um, when trying to get the the jump made? And and you know, do you see going like, yeah, that's that's going to crop up more in the future? Oh. I mean, you know, in independent filmmaking, you've got to have a good team and you have to have people that you can trust, right? So it's always having a, building that good team and, and keeping that good team uh, because I, you know, Atlanta right now, I think what, what what's, which is where I am right now. So I'll speak about my market more specifically, but um, Atlanta is structured for the studio system. Yeah. It is not structured for independence. There really isn't a like large independent filmmaking scene here. It's it's small. That's it's, weird, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. There are a few different people. Most of us don't know each other. We're kind of independently operating, which is that's what I'm I'm hoping by having met that gentleman in Orlando and, and all that we're trying to bring each other together. Um because yeah it's it's getting the resources right it's um even though you're independent to me and some say this may be the wrong way to look at it. I want my film to look good. I want my film to be professional. I want my film. I mean, I mean, if there's one thing I think I've noticed about the jump, we're one of the few that had opening credits, end credits. It was it was um, clean. I made it very clean and very professional. Um, and that was important to me because um, I want to be taken seriously in this industry. And I think like if you put that little extra time and that little extra polish on your films, mm -hmm. it matters because cutting those corners, you may have a great film in there, but then people go, oh, it's a little, you know, and, and so you lose people or you lose your professional touch yeah. um, on things that, okay, you it might've taken the extra minute and you need to have somebody who knows how to do that. I didn't know how to do professional credits or any of that stuff, but I found somebody who did. Mm -hmm. And it mattered to me to make sure that it was clean and it was polished. So, um, but it's resources, right? So that's extra resources. And yeah. some people don't have those. So I think having resources important and, and funny enough, I think the second thing is just, if we're talking about this film particularly, whether it was summer in Atlanta and it was an outdoor film and not being able to control, you know, we were shooting on the street and um, we couldn't stop traffic. Yep. Uh, we couldn't, you know, we had to allow them in the neighborhood to move by. So it was sure. constant stopping. That, then, but you know what though? That is very much how uh, it was when we were kids. You were playing in the street, car, you know, car. 
<laughs> and so 100 and then um there's a convenience store scene and my director uh just you know he loved the way it looked he loved the color of it that it popped and, and if you look at a lot of the film there's kind of this blue and yellow pop that kind of our colorist was amazing to, to pull that out too but um this convenience store was like this really kind of pretty blue color like a baby blue and um it was in the worst location on the planet and so when my my director's like no we gotta shoot there and i was like oh are you kidding me and so there was no way to stop there's the busiest intersection right there it's loud cars are going by every weather started we had something like i forget it was like 25 or 50 lightning strikes that happened we were about to shoot the kids riding through the neighborhood and we were literally sitting there looking and on the app they went no they said this is you know we shut it down and we barely got to our holding area down the street and it just came down. So it was like traffic, not being able to stop things, loud, thunderbolts. Um, <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, that's always the hardest because if you're, if you're a film with, uh, you know, a budget and a lot of things, you can shut streets down. You can use studios, uh, you can sound stages, you know, um, and, and we didn't have that. So I think with, independent filmmaking, you are battling weather and natural circumstances that you can't control. And that ups how the, the hard level goes up a lot. <laughs> but, so but that also, would be what I would say. Everything that you just described, though, I think is so much, and you kind of you kind of touched on this a little bit, which was like, it's very camaraderie building. You know, you're all in that mess together and i think that that is that's fantastic um yeah I, I, honestly i and you i uh i think we've s discussed a little bit i think i want to say it was off camera so hopefully uh where is the jump going to be at next ah so um on march 22nd we will be part of the gasparilla film festival in tampa florida and then on april 27th we will be at the sunscreen film festival and um st pete st petersburg uh, st petersburg yeah. That's going to be great. Fantastic. Well, yeah. I, I, I look, everyone who was at uh, the South Georgia Film Festival seemed to enjoy the jump. Hopefully audiences continue to enjoy it. Hopefully that brings you to the next thing that you want to work on. Is there anything in particular you want to uh, you know, talk about that you're working on right now or anything you want to send anyone like in links or anything like that? Yeah, no, I wish there was. Um, I was, uh, you know, we, we, in a long-term situation, I have a series that has a companion comic book that we kind of started. Like comics. <laughs> you know, we took a break because for multitude of reasons, but um, hopefully I can get back to that. Um, and uh, I have scripts I'm reading, so I'm kind of, I really wanted to enjoy the ride with this. I really wanted to kind of go through the whole thing. I didn't want to be thinking about, and I know that's like breaking a producer role. You're supposed to be already like, oh, I'm working on this and that and, and everything else. But it's like, no, I know I really want to enjoy this. And when I feel like it's done, um, plans for this, I think once we've finished the circuit, which we're about halfway through is to put it on Amazon. So I think it'll go on Amazon video direct. So it'll be available to, to people to watch everywhere. Fantastic. Well, Thank you very much uh, for for sitting down and, and taking the time, kind of after the fact, uh, for for chatting with me. I know everyone's so busy, and you know I'm just glad that I was able to wrangle a couple extra interviews and chat with people. And um, so thank you very much, and and hopefully uh, everything keeps going, continuing well with the jump with jump, and and we'll you know hopefully we'll see you on the next movie as well. I hope so too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.